say the actual name of it. And Ding Javeller National Park, which is beautiful. That's where all the glaciers are, you guys will check out, right? So, um, what's neat about that place you guys know, and like the guy that I was with told me a cool story. So he's from Iceland, he's been guiding for about 25 years now, okay? And uh, so he took a picture about after five years of guiding, and he showed us a picture, and we were sitting, standing here, we got off the bus, he's like, okay, it's his photo. Like, this is where the glacier was when I, when I started touring, okay? Like, come, come with me, and I'm, I'm gonna show you guys where the glacier is now. And you know, we start walking this path, and like, you see like, this like, scarf and then this thing's carved out as you guys go. And then you can see like this, like, this blue mirage as you guys are walking through, okay? Like, as you guys get closer and closer, you realize that that's the glacier. You end up walking 900 meters. So I let go of that, that's almost a kilometer, okay? So it's like a 10, 15 minute walk in, 20 years is how much it's received, okay? So like, it's like where you can actually like actually see global warming, okay? So it's pretty incredible. He'll tell you his story all about that, which is, which is kind of cool, right? So check that out when you guys are there. Um, like I said, a pretty complete tour for you guys. Um, so that's the hotel that you guys will be staying at. So if you guys do the upgrade, those are the hotels that I got to stay at. Uh, like I said, the hotel upgrade is not too expensive. Um, and it makes a big difference, you guys know. So for example, I don't have a bunch of accommodations, for example, when you're over in Reykjavik. The hotel we stay at is in Reykjavik, but it's not in the center of Reykjavik. That made it 10 or 15 minute walk in to the center of Reykjavik. Still a good area, still tons of things around to do. If you do the upgrade, you stay right in Reykjavik. You literally open up your doors and you are right where your offer house is. You know what I mean? So it's pretty neat. Uh, like I said, the solid accommodation is uh, a lot higher end, but it's completely up to you guys, which is nice. You guys can kind of choose, and you'll still all go on the exact same tour which is really, really nice. So the bottom line is the, uh, the cottage? The, this is not, uh, sorry. Let's go back here. So, so this would be your, your basic hotel room, your budget style accommodation, and this would be kind of like your upgrade, and this is the center plaza that we're going to use over in right there. So, like I said, a little bit of an upgrade, right? Like I said, the cottages I like, don't have a photo of for you guys, that's the guest house that we use over in right there. So, um, so day one, like I said, I ported, uh, included airport transfers for you guys. Uh, like I said to you guys before, remainder of the area at leisure. Um, there is optional activities you guys can add on if you guys want to. So, some people might want to scoot dive between the two tectonic plates, some people might want to go whale watching, some people might want to go up north and go check out some other um, filming places for Game of Thrones. So there's lots of different things you guys can do over in Iceland. A lot of movies have actually been filmed in Iceland. So again, your first full day is completely free to do that. You'll have your welcome meeting, like I said, meet your guy, check everything out, and then go back to bed or go out for the night, wake up, and the next day the city tour of Reykjavik is going to start. So you kind of do a walking tour, you'll see the main news uh, Usual when you guys are there, we'll do the Opera House. Uh, the Opera House is amazing. Um, it's probably it's one of the best acoustics in the entire world. Okay, uh, when you guys actually look at it from the outside, it's, it's incredible. So, and we actually have to go inside the building the history, how it was built, why it was so important. Um, and like I said, like if you're lucky enough to go uh, during um, New Year's, they do an, an amazing, amazing like array of lights there and sounds, and like it's really neat. So you guys can check that out. Um, then we're gonna go for a cheese tasting and lunch one of my favorite parts, so it's a very, very cool cheese, uh, cheese over in Iceland. Um, then we're going to go to one of the national parks, which, can you pronounce your name? There we go, absolutely, that's how I pronounce it there, which is UNESCO World Heritage Site, so check that out. Um, you'll also get to go there and check out the thermal baths, and then you'll have a, a over nice day in the group board luxury hotel, which is beautiful, uh, and that's it right there. So like I said, very, very nice when you guys are there. The next day, day three, we're going to go to Gullfoss Falls, uh, part of the Golden Circle, so uh, one of the major waterfalls over um, uh, in Iceland. It's like a cascade waterfall. So Iceland is in that area, so a lot of different things to do. Okay, so like when you guys are there, you can also go to the famous geyser. The geyser erupts every five to fifteen minutes, which is kind of neat. So if you guys do wait there, you guys will see the geyser explode. That's going to happen about 400 meter walk from Gullfoss Falls. So it's super close. We go there for lunch too, which is kind of neat. Um, you guys would do visit the geyser uh, thermal spas, uh, where you guys can boil some fun eggs when you guys are there. Have some steamed egg bread, which will kind of get you on the local delicacies. If they ask you to try a fermented shark, say no. It is awful, okay? Or the whale boat, okay? No beer. They go up to you, they're like, try this. I'm like, sure, don't do it. Okay, so then afternoon, uh, you visit the seaside village, um, which is kind of neat because you can see the coastal town, and it's an old fisherman's village you guys need to check out. So again, that's where one of their main source of exports is, and one of the main sources of things they eat is fish. Fish is very, very big there. So you're going to the history of that when you guys go over there. Um, and you have dinner at the Seaside Restaurant, which is gorgeous. Um, it's all fresh seafood. If you don't like seafood, we have tons of other options. If you have any dietary restrictions or needs, we can accommodate them on absolutely every single one of our tours. But what it means when you guys go to the Seaside Restaurant, um, so they have a main buffet there, which you're going to have like, all your fixings. 
but then they actually have tanks all around it of fresh fish, and you can go with the fish that you want, and they'll take it out of the tank. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Like, this is like a native tradition that they've had in Iceland for years, right? So like, we really want you guys to have that experience because this is what they do there, right? So you guys have that, like I said, if you're not into that, there's tons of food that we get for you guys, but it's a neat experience when you guys are over there. Day four, we go to, I call it E13, I cannot pronounce it, letter E, it starts with 13 letters long. Um, the Tillin Ted is the volcano that uh, caused all the air disruption over in Europe. Um, and believe it or not, back in 2010, I was actually a travel agent, much like Sheila. So I had to deal with this mess for my clients, and believe me, and I'm not going to say this, it was a nightmare. Okay, because my flights were going, my car's like, I take a train here, then a carrier pigeon here, and then maybe like, and nothing was working out. So, um, it was one of those places where, you know, I, I really felt bad for people that didn't, didn't have insurance because it's one of those times where like, you know, the sad I find some repairs, like, they just, get yeah, hotels raised all the hotel rates, the prices were outrageous, it was so unfair, but, um, but yeah, uh, after that you guys have to go to Skoda, Skoda Falls waterfall visit. Um, this is probably one of the highest, most impressive waterfalls over Iceland. Which is cool about it, there's two things you can do if you want. You can actually hike on top of it, okay? So you guys can actually go on top of it, or you can go behind it, right? So, uh, go, like, one way to do it, go behind it, get that photo, that famous photo, we get that shadow in the background. Or, like I said, you guys can actually climb on top. It's definitely a little bit of a hike, so you get to go on top and actually look down at it, which is pretty cool. Then we do the glacier walks. Uh, so, like I said, like, the story about global warming, that's where you're going to hear all about it, right? That's when we do that walk. But the glaciers, when you guys are there as well, uh, over at viewing of the Northern Lights, so. Um, and then day five, we're going to take you guys back over to Reykjavik. So we're going to arrive back into Reykjavik so you guys go there. Um, we're going to go over the hot springs when you guys are there, uh, the lighthouse. So what you guys are looking at, that photo there, when we say hot springs, you know what we're talking about? It's a famous place. Blue Lagoon. A Blue Lagoon, absolutely, yeah. So we're going to go over to the Blue Lagoon. That's it there. Um, with us, you do get the deluxe pass at the Blue Lagoon. It's about 140 euros just by itself. Okay? So that's your entrance to get into there. You know, get your silicon mud when you guys get in. You get your wristbands, so you guys will get your free drink when you're there. You have your locker rental, uh, you get a rope as well. So it's like the full treatment when you guys are there, which is nice. So you know, we're there for about two hours, um, which is nice. Since day five, if you want to extend, a bit more time there, right? We go there for a few hours, like I said. Um, then we go to like a local Viking shop and a Viking museum, um, which is really, really neat. I'm going to show you guys photos I took at the museum, but it is like so incredible. And like, said, like the way the Vikings planned everything out over in Iceland, you know, throw Greenland. You know, here they're here the Vikings. No, the Vikings. Yeah. And like, you know, yeah, the Vikings. Yeah, the Vikings. <laughs> the Vikings. Yeah. And one of the cool stories is like what we're saying right now, like, you know, this is like a Marvel Comics kind of thing. But um, so before, you know, when we lived in Iceland, Greenland, they really believed in the Viking gods, you know what I mean? So Thor, right? So that was a big thing to them. And then obviously, like, that phased out, and Lutheran was the, the way to go, right? So everyone in Iceland, when you're born into Iceland, you're in Lutheran, okay? Um, famous Lutheran, you cheat if you go there. However, over the last about seven or eight years, a lot of people actually have been leaving the cathedral and going back and believing in the Viking gods again. Uh, and you'll hear the story there. It's kind of cool, and like it's like how the transformations happen. So check that out when you guys are over there at the, um, the Viking shop. Uh, then we'll go for lunch. So you get to do the seafood and crab lunch feast, okay? Again, like seafood is a big, big thing over there. But not to worry. I know I scared people by just talking about seafood. There's tons of other food to eat. As I said, these are the ones that are included, but if you need anything else, we can definitely take care of you guys. Um, and like I said, uh, the Blue Lagoon, the afternoon soak, where you guys can relax. Um, so then we do a transfer back into town, like I said. However, some clients also just want to hang out with that Blue Lagoon the day. They'll say, hey, we'll meet you at dinner, okay? Um, it's really, really easy to get a bus for the Blue Lagoon back in the right of it. Like, super, super easy. Um, like I said, the hotel that we use is right down there, so really, really nice. So if you want to extend, you want to do more time there, you definitely can. Then you'll go to bed, uh, we'll do your, our farewell dinner, then you go to bed, you wake up, last day's at leisure, and then you have your transfer back to the airport. Um, so that's pretty much that true in the nutshell. Um, like I said, you guys got it for, what did you get me down to? What did you, uh, 2295. 2295, like I said. Before the 10%. And before the 10%, so then you get the additional 10% off that price as well, so about $230 off there, so. And um, I'll just mention, if you get a solo room, the 10% doesn't include solo solo. It doesn't, no, no. So I just want to make sure no one's surprised by that. And the 22 will be off, you'll say it comes off that, but just the 700 yeah. more. Yeah, so um, we do have other tours. So you can actually do that exact tour and upgrade for two days longer and go up to the north, okay? I haven't been to the north, so I don't know what it's like. I'm just going you really, really big to like doing like ice caverns and seeing more glaciers. It's worth it. Otherwise, and like I said, or if you're like a really, really, really like heavy duty photographer or you want like some like aerial or landscape drone shots, porch up there. Um, like again, I haven't been there. You guys can look it up. But if you have the time, you can definitely check out the north as well when you guys are there. What was the name of the volcano? 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll get Maria to pronounce it, no? Yeah, she's good. They're going to all the My translator. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, there you go. E, uh, can you get it like her? Yeah, that's why I don't do it, guys. So that's why I want it for team. So, because yeah, I couldn't even, like, Chairs always on suites, uh, five to eight day itineraries. We've actually extended Iceland's become so popular. We actually have up to now 12 day itineraries for you guys, right? Which is a lot more inclusive. Um, we don't do any private or itinerary touring right now. Um, so, what that means is if you guys want to do like a private tour just to you, you can do it right now. Um, entrance fees are always included with on the go tours. Uh, tours apart weekly, like I said, so if you guys want to add anything on, you guys can't. Airport transfers are included, and you're always going to see the Golden Circle. So, the Golden Circle, the three things that you're always going to do is the geyser. Go Foss Falls, and that we actually go to a greenhouse. I actually didn't get to talk about it in the presentation, but we want you guys to see how the vegetation has grown when you guys are there. Everything is growing in greenhouses when you're in Iceland. And I'll show you a photo. So we go to a tomato greenhouse, sold by a local farmer that we've been dealing with for the last 15 years, um, and also owns a horse farm as well. So he has Icelandic horses. So we go there, we actually, like, his daughter took us out with him when we were there anyway. So, like, we got to go there, we got to meet the horses, and we got to pet them and see them. Like, these, like, miniature little, like, you know, horses, and, like, Icelandic horses are always pure crap, you know, they've never, ever mixed with anything. Um, any Icelandic horse that leaves the country has never allowed back into the country. It's a mm. true fact. Okay? They never want crossbreeding. They want to keep everything in Iceland very, very pure. So they're very, very proud of the horses. To give you an idea of how proud of the horses they are, right now there's currently $300,000, about 300,000 people living over in Iceland. There's 140,000 horses in Iceland. Mm -hmm. Almost about two horses per person, okay? So they love their horses. They, okay? uh, they have wild horses and their farm horses as well, yeah. So yeah, exactly, both of them over there. So they're very, very important to them. So you go to the farmhouse, you'll meet here, you'll meet the horses. She, you don't get to ride them, but she'll ride them and show you like the different trot styles they have. Plus, like, for, uh, horses are famous, because they have a fifth trot style, which is the only horse in the entire world to have five trot styles. And she'll show you the difference between all of them, which is kind of cool. And she goes around her track when you guys are there. Then we get to go into the greenhouses, so you'll learn about like the vegetation. It's really neat because, you know, Icelandic people are very, very proud of the vegetation because they're able to grow it under the perfect conditions. Like, I mean, absolutely perfect. So to give you an idea, they actually import the bees to pollinate from Argentina. They actually import the flies to pollinate from, um, uh, Mongolia, which is just crazy. So like, they have like these things that come in here, and they're, like, so, like, they're able to control the temperature and the optimal growing. So they give you this whole spot of you see all these sand and water works and everything, and then you get a taste of the tomatoes there. I don't know what they do, but they do taste really, really good. So you get to the tomatoes there, um, and then of course they're going to try to sell you tomato jam and tomato this and tomato that, and tomato paste you can put all over, right? But it is a really cool experience when you guys are there. Uh, so you guys will get to do that on shore as well, and that's going to happen when you guys are at the Golden Circle. So. Uh, and like I said, uh, um, other than Iceland, uh, we do go all around the world, right? So if you guys are looking to go any other destinations, we do go there, um, pretty much all the major tourist places. Uh, the only three major, well, only two major places we don't go right now, uh, North America, so we don't do tours over in North America, and Australia, which I know you're yeah. doing, uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific, but pretty much anywhere else, if you're looking to go to Italy, or Greece, or Russia, or Vietnam, or India, except we do them all, so, um, but now we're going to get into Vietnam for you guys. 